Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today with Dr. Mark Katakowski. Uh, as a brief introduction, Mark is president of the longevity company Forever Labs. He also just might live forever. Uh, Dr. Mark Katakowski, everyone. My name is Mark Katakowski, and I'm the president of Forever Labs. We're a longevity company, and we're based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, currently, we're out here in Mountain View, though, because we're in the summer class of, of Y Combinator. We've been operational for about a, a year and a half, and so what we do is we, we bank adult stem cells and then cryopreserve them for future therapy, and we also are working on developing some of these therapies uh, for which to use these cells in. First, I want to talk about is a, an issue we don't like to think about too much. So how do we die? In middle age, we start to die of causes that are quite similarly related. They're called age-related diseases, and, and so that's heart disease and the number one killer in cancer, stroke and, and uh, lung disease, dementia. What they have in common is they are caused by a dysfunction at the cellular level, which leads to dysfunction at the tissue level, which leads to systemic failure. So what are we doing about it? We are developing technologies that are enabling us to work with our biology in very subtle ways to actually do maintenance and improvement on a cellular level. And by doing so, we're able to prevent the dysfunction of cells, um, and we're also able to actually sometimes undo some dysfunction in cells and restore the health on the cellular level. The, the definition of what a stem cell is, is it's, just a, it's a cell that can do two things, two important things. One, divide almost indefinitely. The other important thing that stem cells can do is they can divide into multiple tissue types. But there's a third characteristic that doesn't define stem cells, but something they generally have. They have a powerful influence on the tissue around them. What that means, especially in this context of injury, it means they can, they can promote healing, they can decrease inflammation and promote regeneration. Um, and so that's why we were looking at, can we use these cells to treat stroke? But there's this problem, the stem cells that we're using are, are declining and when you're more likely to have a stroke, you, all your stem cells have, have gone downhill. We'd often talk about this stuff and we said, well, we should do something about that. That's, you know, and, and there's something you can do really easy. You just like take them and send them forward in time. You just take the young cells and you send them to your future self and, and, and use them when you're old. And so you just cryopreserve the cells. We've been doing that for a long time. It's a matter of course in the lab. Once at liquid nitrogen, the cells are biologically inert. As long as you freeze them carefully and as long as you thaw them carefully, the time in between doesn't matter so much. So, okay, we, can, we could take our cells, our young cells, and freeze them for older cells. Definitely, if you want to replace tissue, if you want to uh, get new tissue, you, you need, your, your own cells are by far the best. Age-related disease is not a fact of all life. I think a lot of people just think life, death, you know, this is just part of the natural process. But they aren't two sides of the same coin. Amoebas and other singular cellular organisms, they don't necessarily age. So an amoeba, when it divides, you don't have a young amoeba and an old amoeba. You have two amoebas, they're the same age. They just, amoebas get around the problem by just fixing damage faster than it happens. They can fix the wear and tear of life faster than it occurs. And so there are these creatures that, that don't experience aging, but multicellular organisms, they tend to. But it does beg the question, and this is something that we were often talking about. Do we, does this have to happen? And if we could, if we could do like the amoeba, and we can do maintenance on a, on a low a cellular level, and a, could we prevent um, the aging process in humans? I don't want to be unrealistic. It's a hard, it's a difficult problem. You got entropy to deal with, and so there's disorder whenever you're trying to create order in biology. There's generally a lot of different uh, loops um, and, and shared mechanisms. And, uh, and that, that makes this a, a difficult um, problem to address. So we've delivered, we've, we've developed this, what we, you know, it's like kind of a hack, right? Not enough technology. Um, we're, we're freezing youth, but what we really want to do is, is prevent the aging process in humans. We're like, well, that's great. Let's, let's use young cells, and we'll try to treat aging itself. Like, we call it the golden years, but if aging was a product, nobody would buy it. 